Hey, hey aunties, what's, what's brewing today? today? Auntie Hennessy remembers market days. Auntie Vaca remembers Castor. And Auntie Chardonnay remembers Coachella. So get your cups ready for Minority Report. <laughs> Hey y'all, What's how y'all doing? <laughs> doing well. Hopefully you had a good Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you just had. Celebrating them all the holidays. <laughs> all of them, all, all the above. <laughs> Happy Kwanzaa. What's that commercial? Happy Hanukkah, Christmas Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa, Christmas Kwanzaa, Christmas like Kwanzaa, Christmas yeah, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Whatever it is, and hopefully community, you guys had a great holiday season. Yes, uh, we're actually off right now you know we're taking a little vacay a little time off from the podcast but we didn't want to leave you hanging mm-hmm. so what we did was selected a couple highlights of the season that we thought we liked yeah. <laughs> or not even thought we did like stuff that was funny <laughs> something that was deep um things that you guys gave us feedback on or things like that so we just want to give you a little best of uh so you didn't leave you hanging every Monday while we were taking a couple weeks off. So uh So for me, I picked Market Days, uh the conversation that we had opening up the episode. Um <laughs> I I rarely get FOMO, but y'all two was cutting up and cutting out down there with Ooh. with no morals. <laughs> so no. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> it was the one that didn't have the morals in that one. <laughs> but it, <laughs> it was a great episode <laughs> and I really enjoyed the flow and just how everyone was living their best life except for me no <laughs> but dewan and i are, <clears throat> are still kind of recouping from the market days weekend here i still don't have oh. a full voice it did a number on me i feel so bad for me. you guys oh i feel so bad for you <laughs> so bad <laughs> and you should <laughs> and you should right <laughs> the weather was mm-hmm. gorgeous it was absolutely Beautiful. gorgeous did it not yeah. rain this year no that's the first Mm-mm. Because normally know, at some right? point it always rains like either Friday night. It looked night, like it was going to a little bit on or like Sunday. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, it didn't. It was it maybe clear. 80 degrees. And then at night it was in the 60s with a like, little breeze. Woo. Ooh, it was really nice. It was nice. refreshing, was wasn't it? Yes. It was. Especially in Atlanta right now where the real feel is like 105 like for the last three weeks. Mm-hmm. So it was dope. I didn't get to see Dewan as much. But when we did see each other, we was extra Girl. lit. We I saw that Instagram story. Uh, first of all, the first Instagram story was pure black. I was like, pure black. Now you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know these girls are gone. I was what, like, you about, what you what you got against black people? I was like, we didn't we didn't find the lighting. Nothing. We like turned off the sound by accident. It was a mess. It was a mess. <laughs> but we were hammered though, like in co- little it was distance. A mess. It was one of those nights where, you know, when you wake up the next morning and then you can't remember anything. So you have to go back through your phone to look your at phone, right. your Instagram <laughs> or your pictures or your videos to or see your what text happened messages. the night before. Yep. Yes. It was that kind of night. Oh, it was a, that kind of a day for me. Like it started early because we went to a barbecue and I should have known the second we all went to that barbecue, what kind of day it was going to be. Did it okay. happen to y'all like last year? Didn't like land into somebody who threw up in the bush? Landon. <laughs> hey, boo. Hey, <laughs> Landon. All your goodness out here. <laughs> I don't, and that's the funny thing. This year, we're like, okay, Friday, we're going to behave ourselves. We're not going to go all the way in because we know what happens on that first day. So we did mm-hmm. well that Friday. That Saturday, though, we said, oh, we made it through Friday. Let's turn all the way up. And it was a wreck, like all of us. Look, like, we're just gone. <laughs> I knew y'all were gone because I didn't get one. I didn't get one FaceTime, so I knew that that crew was gone. I knew that whole all crew was way. gone because whenever way. someone's not there, the thing is to FaceTime the people that ain't exactly. there. And I was like, oh, they gone. They Girl. are so gone. And plus, the phones like it gets busier and busier every year there Mm -hmm. and my phone was like it was like a brick i might as well just kept it down yeah like kept it off yeah because it took forever to post that insta story it it took forever to send texts it was just like well it's just gonna be in my pocket all day (laughs) i didn't even take that many (laughs) pictures which is bizarre because usually you try to catch some little candid Mm -hmm. moments where Uh, was that drag show that that um that brunch i went to because that looked lit 
Yeah, so there's a bar called The River in Chicago. It used to be a straight bar when I lived there. But uh, on Sundays now, they pa- they paired up with Splash, which used to be Mini Bar. And they do a drag brunch now. Okay. The food's eh, but the entertainment was awesome. Is that the one in Wrigleyville? Uh, it is in Lakeview. Lakeview, okay. So it's like at uh, Sheffield and almost diversity area. Okay. I'm not sure if you guys know the, the cross streets community. I and do. All that. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, no, it, it, that was lit. And then um, but okay, so Friday, what were you gonna say? Friday, we started okay. Friday. <laughs> so, just my experience, we get in um, like around, I think we land around six o'clock at O'Hare, and we take the train in, and then I'm meeting up with Hey Rashad, Hey Eric, um, met up with my duties at um, what was that place called? Summer House Santa Monica. So we had a nice little civilized dinner. Sat on the patio, had bottles of bubbly going and whatever. And as we're sitting out on the patio, we see all these just beautiful, stacked, gorgeous, muscly men, just (laughs) men. And they're a lot of them are wearing like black tank tops and black T-shirts and they keep going back and forth. Now, mind you, the summer house is it's on Halstead, but it's like way south. Okay, so it's not in Boys Town just yet. So it's it's way south. Mm -hmm. So we're like, where where the heck are these men going? And then we realize that there is this place called Manhandler Saloon. Oh, you never knew that was next door. I knew that it was next door, but I had never been there. Okay, (laughs) maybe I just spilled the tea on myself. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, oh, the one next door. Uh huh. So we are just like flabbergasted. Like, what the heck is going on? There must be a party or something going on over there at Manhandler that we got to check out. And so, you know, we we finish our cackling. We finish having our good time. And then, you know, we pay the bill. We're lit by this time. And then, you know, the, the four of us stroll on over to Manhandler. Now, it's just to give you guys a visual. I love that <laughs> name. I love that name. It is it is a indescript black building. Yes. It very indescript. It's kind of like a bathhouse in a sense. Like there are no windows. Oh, yeah. There's just there's just a door. Mm-hmm. It's only one story. It's a small just it, like it, you would not know anything is there or that it's even open at all. There's no signs on the exterior at all. Okay. <laughs> With the capital T. Okay. So yes. so we 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 approach the door. We open the door and we walk in. You walk, go inside, and it's it's like a regular bar. You know, I mean, nothing fancy. Mm, you know, yeah. there were a couple of people at the bar or whatever and they had a couple of bartenders and so we ordered a couple of drinks and we're like okay well maybe there's something going on in the back or downstairs we don't know what oh, it yes. is <laughs> Ooh, so we get our drinks and we stroll on to the back and we find that there's like a little like garden in the back area and i'm using the word garden very loosely because it was <laughs> it was no pun it was intended gravel, it was gravel rock <laughs> with lawn chairs <laughs> back there and then they had you know just guys sitting back there now you remember when you were in, in middle school and you go to them dance and you weren't like confident enough to like talk to the girl across the across the way so the boy sat on one side the girl sat on the other side you know it was kind of like that but it was all old men right just yeah. like looking at each other okay and but then look, you went I, to the back I love back. my zaddies well I, I like my da- zaddies but these were not zaddies these were like old men <laughs> oh, like, oh. Tired, tired. Mm-hmm. our friend were, I'm, never mind I'm not about to put my friend's business up there <laughs> look, you almost said it we almost said it I was like and I oop <laughs> shout out to san diego though that's all i'll say <laughs> and then if you if you continue to saunter on towards the back through the garden you will come to the stable darling yes darling. <laughs> and the stable is this big brick bra- this big uh brick and wooden building it's almost like a that barn is- it's just like a barn, literally, like without a, the hay, a shed or something. And you, yeah, and you enter the barn, and, and all you hear is. <laughs> <laughs> Jarrell wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I was. I was not ready. <laughs> that sound took was, me out. Miss that- I can't with you with these sound effects. <laughs> we oh went my in goodness. there. It was completely dark and you saw shadows and you heard these noises and we 
all looked at each other. Now, mind you, okay, let me just. Wait, uh, okay, hold with, up. Who, who joined in though? Who was I'm like, ooh? No, that means so. I'm I'm there with my boo, and then it's my best friend Eric and my best friend Rashad. We don't play around like that with each other. So right. this was no, not I know a, that. This so was that. not a Judy so, scene. So who left and who stayed is a the question. Then, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a fact. Exactly. Spill the tea now. Come right. on, now. get to we the good part laugh. of the story. <laughs> <laughs> we all laughed. I mean, that was that's anticlimactic. We all ended up leaving. Like after, after like <laughs> after about after about the sixteenth suck that we heard. Uh, y'all stayed there like, for sixteen. Se- we had to be sure. You had to be. Sh- what more did you need? A, a spotlight? <laughs> I mean, we <laughs> would have been nice. Nope. Oh. You, you know what? You might not like what you would have seen, though. I used to live in that neighborhood, so that's how I know what the Van Haller was. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you used to live in that bar. <laughs> no, 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 no. I been, I'm not going to lie. I've been to that bar. Because she um, knew what was that once she started. I was like, oh, yeah, I know that. Oh, yeah, the one next to the summer house. Because it was so funny. When they were building Summer, the Santa Monica restaurant, I was like, do they know what they're building? Like, it's this bougie place. Do they know what they're building next to in the middle of Lincoln Park here? Oh, that restaurant. <laughs> Didn't we have dinner at that restaurant? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That yes, was, we yeah. Okay, there. I remember that restaurant. So it's in that and area. it's literally next door. Like, it's, it's right in between that door. and then, like, an apartment, like a brownstone. Okay. And in the middle yes. of just old building that you, you walk past <laughs> it and you, you don't even know what you the hell it is. Know. I will you never forget that place know. because Landon got, us that, <laughs> Landon got that discount because he was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> And let that Yelp review. Yes, <laughs> wait a minute. What? What? So she she was mad about something. I think it might have been the service or yeah, something. Yeah, the day. service. And Landon was not having it. Landon's quick to let you know that he's not having it too. Mm-hmm. And so he let them have it that day. And he was like, "And I'm leaving a Yelp review." <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord! Oh my God! But no, the, uh, the whole weekend was a blast. Just because yeah. the weather was so nice, the weather held out. The lines were insanity. They like they get worse and worse every year. Um, I will tell you honestly that for me, like I'm not a crowds person at all, and I, I the whole reason for being there was to be there for the festival and the music and blah blah and mm-hmm. seeing your friends exactly. But the lines to get into the bars were so long; they were literally two two city blocks yes. long to get in, and they weren't moving. No, like so Friday night sidetracks line. If people know, if you're familiar with Sidetrack Community. It goes past the 7-Eleven. It goes it way. Went, it went down to almost replay. Yes. So you know where replay is compared to yes. Sidetrack. That's how long the line was. Three city blocks. It was insane. Insane. So that that kind of sucked. I didn't go to Progress. I held my own because, you know. Neither did I, darling. I, I, I still don't know if they're doing anything for the community. Even though I did hear that music. I was walking past. I was tempted. I'm not going to lie because that music be it. <laughs> It'd be the best music in the city, and they still playing the best music in the city. So luckily, they're still playing rap. But I held Not out just because I don't Satan. know. I don't know if they're doing anything post their little scandal in May. It doesn't look like they've done anything for the community. So until then, I'm holding out. And but I wasn't judging people for doing what they wanted to do. Y'all grown ups, people are grown ups, and people were like, "Oh, I feel bad. I want you to go. I want you to still hang out." I'm like, "Do what you gotta do, booze." Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't. It's fine. But I just know for me, I couldn't do it. So it's what it is. It was a blast, though. I'm still a little hoarse. <laughs> like, I still but don't wait have a, minute. a full voice. So Saturday. Uh-huh. <laughs> so Saturday. Oh, back to our Saturday. So I was like, how did we get here? <laughs> yeah, no, Saturday was the ultimate turn. I, up. Okay, so I left. Not I. Me and Adam decided we were going to leave Market Days. Because we had been standing in line at... We wanted to go... Adam wanted to go to... to um, Roscoe's because he just wanted to have a beer and it was just for old time's sake or whatever. So we thought, okay, we'll go there. The line isn't that long. We'll just go there, have a, you know, have a beer or two or whatever, and then go to another bar or just go up and down the strip. We get in that line and we're waiting. I kid you not an hour and a half. I believe it. Get to the door. They're charging a 25 cover. At where? At Roscoe's. Roscoe's. And Lost this ain't the chicken place mind. either. <laughs> nope. Lost their damn mind. Now this, this is the $1 beer place. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what Roscoe's is. So we were pissed because we waited this entire time, just like losing our buzz in this line, in this heat with these people, all, all, only to get up to the front of the line, find out that they're charging covers. So we're like, nope, not doing that. So we were like walking up and down the strip a little bit, and we wanted something hard to drink because we needed to recoup. We needed to recoup our our buzz. 
But all you can get on the street is beer, wine, and those like it's white sangry. claws, bear claws, or okay. whatever they call. Let's hold the story for a second. These white claws. Where the hell did White Claw come from? Like the last like three six months, Tell like me, it's insane. Please. I don't like, like them. I don't like. You don't them. like them? No. I don't mind them. It was my first time having them this weekend. I see them all over Atlanta. I see them all over wherever I go. Whoever marketed White Claw is brilliant. Like they need a they need a promotion. Seriously, like this shit because is it was everywhere. It was everything everybody was talking about exactly. the entire weekend. And for those that don't that are under a rock, White Claw is a seltzer hard beverage. So like yep. it's almost like a la, like a Dasani sparkling it's water La-Claw. or whatever, a lacroix. It's Claw with a kick. With alcohol in it. It's like 5% right. alcohol. And so they got like black cherry, mango, all these different flavors. But literally, that's all you saw the entire weekend was White Claw everywhere. See, I'm used to them because in volleyball, <clears throat> especially during outdoor season, it's like a very refreshing drink to drink. So, like, mm-hmm. you literally buy them and you're like, oh, you know, it's it's light, you know, it's nothing too heavy. It's not a beer. Right. So a lot of people And it's like, not sugary. Yeah. And so a lot of people, especially in the volleyball community, love to drink them. But um, I don't know. Like, if I'm a drink, I'm a drink. <laughs> I'm gonna go you know? in. So like, I just, now. I just, I can't get behind them because I'm like, I'm not spending my money on something that ain't gonna give me no buzz. I can get with that. Yeah, it's crazy. So though. yeah, that it was, was that was they were everywhere. So we were like, we we're like, okay, this is just not working. And at this point, I'm like, I've lost my buzz. Everybody else is like out. They got their titties and their asses out, and I'm still like fully clothed. I represented my minority with my minority, so I was still clothed. So we were. I was just like, you know what? Let's just go to Bobby Bobby Loves. Let's just go. And so Bobby Loves, all- Loves is a karaoke bar in Chicago, a gay karaoke yes. bar. Yes, but it was outside of all of market market days. So we we exited. Scroll on up there. We get to the bar. There's it's it's a healthy crowd inside. We found a table and we sat down and we got drinks. Now, mind you, these drinks were like six dollars, but they were like double doubles, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, which is nice. So we got our buzz back real fast. Yes. And we were there for maybe I don't know what, like maybe half an hour before here comes Corell and Jake. <laughs> So the reason why I'm, uh, I got I was debating if I was going to tell this full story or not <laughs> because I know my mom was tell listening. the children, darling, <laughs> tell the children. So yeah, so Corel was lit on Saturday. Not gonna lie, Auntie Vodka was feeling good, <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> we went to a barbecue and we was getting lit there, and then we made it to Market Days, and we were at Sidetrack Forever, and Sidetrack is just insanity, and we're just like. uh drinking like my friends from dallas were there too like so everyone that i was friends with when we lived in dallas was happened to be in chicago so we're doing shots this and that whatever so curl's feeling good <sighs> do i want to tell i'm debating if i want to tell him myself oh my jesus so anyway <laughs> so we're upstairs and you know how upstairs on sidetrack gets it gets so crazy and busy and packed. stuff like that that's insane Sar- like sardines and so we're staying in the corner by the bar and there's a trash can <laughs> And I have to pee so bad. I'm like, I have to pee. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm just going to pee in the trash can. Yes, it's not the most appropriate thing. I get it. And I get it. So literally the <laughs> second I turned to do so, I didn't even get a chance to do so until I get a tap on my shoulder. <laughs> this is, um, excuse me, mister. You're going to have to go. <laughs> and oh. I'm like, I go, for what? And he's like, I know what you're about to do. I was like, what was I about to do? He's like, you tell me. I was like, no, you tell me. Because <laughs> I didn't do anything. Meanwhile, I'm still having to pee. I'm standing there having this <laughs> argument with this dude that works this there. This is the P. Diddy stare off. Like the P. Diddy stare off. I got the P. Diddy stare off. <laughs> and so anyway, so long story long, Carell had to go. <laughs> uh, and so like the, the manager comes and he actually recognized me from when I used to live there. He's like, I don't know what's going on. He's like, just leave and come back. Like, it is what it is. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So I leave, and then that's when I met up with Jake. And then we were walking up market days, and then I met up with Dewan, and the turn up was extra real. But then I was but like, God, girl, you're too grown to be doing this. <laughs> we ended up, we all ended up at Bobby Loves. We had a, a fantastic time. And then we just got more drinks coming. And then Dewan was up there singing know. Losing His Religion by REM. And it was messy. It was messy, but it was everything. And that's what market days is for. So. 
Anyway, so, <laughs> but uh, but community matter. I did meet a lot of community members. I will say that. So thank you for taking pictures with me, yes. chatting about the podcast, telling me and telling Dewan what you loved about it, et cetera, et cetera. That was awesome. Um, I know. Hopefully, there's a lot of new community members listening to that this episode now because I was handing out pins. I was telling the guys before <laughs> we hopped on. <clears throat> that I was like hoeing myself out for the podcast. I was like, hey, do you listen to podcasts? I'm Karel. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and it was awesome because I ha- ended up having a lot of awesome conversations with people that said that they needed a podcast like this, that they too were feeling like the POC community wasn't being talked to or the conversations that they were having with their friends, they're not hearing anywhere else. So it was just a nice little reminder of what we're doing and what we're doing it for, because we do need to get our stories and um, viewpoints out there. So it was a fun weekend. It was a fun weekend. So Jarrell, we don't, we don't left you all out in this first segment. How was your weekend? Boo? I mean, <laughs> it wasn't market days. <laughs> It's like it, it's like it doesn't matter. It wasn't market days. <laughs> oh my oh, goodness! <laughs> I forgot days. all about them slurping sounds. <laughs> Why you? How you do them on a daily? I'm just kidding. Ooh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she coming for me. She trying pro. to take a vacation. Is she coming for them ankles? <laughs> uh, so many people commented about that slurping episode. Uh, like. We got so many DM. People still reference that. Yes. <laughs> you still reference that. There's still episodes after that where you're still oh, like. Oh, we sure do. We sure do. <laughs> oh, it's a classic. Man. Right. <laughs> what about you for Car- Carell? What was yours? Yeah. So, you know, I was listening back to some some of the first episodes. And one of the ones that we really got deep on was, um, if you recall, the caster. Caster. I forget, I forget how to say her last name. But the track star, the female track star, where the governing body came down on her and saying, okay, you're out of commission now because your testosterone levels are too high mm-hmm. to compete as, quote, unquote, female. So it was an interesting conversation, especially coming in 2020 Olympic year to see if she'll eventually be able to run again. Um, and then we also it was interesting in this as we get in the episode, we predicted them doing this to other athletes they did it to simone biles so that was a little indicator and put it out in the universe and it ended up happening so i mm-hmm. thought it was a good episode and a uh, good conversation <laughs> oh yeah let's check it out and right. so there is a groundswelling of, of 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 love appreciation and acceptance that is happening in this world and though we might not see it because we see these negative things that are happening like people shooting up churches and whatnot and like there the was a semenya uh verdict that came out today right which is upsetting <laughs> and, it's, and it's like i get i kind of and the weird thing is i kind of get what they're trying to do especially when it comes to track and field things are like decided by tenths of uh, tenths of seconds and things like that but how can you define what a female is womanhood yeah and but, like but how, the thing is, i'm much, big in the track so no, yeah, I ran a lot track. of track and, and like it's Track is a genetic sport. It is a genetic sport. Can we just go back for a second and let the the community know like what we're talking about? Because they oh, might yes, not yes, know yes. who um, who Caster is. is and like the situation that we're talking about. So yeah, so um, Caster is a um, female track athlete who's been around for over a decade now. Um, and today, the I don't know if it was the I I the I A F uh, International Association of something track and field. Yeah, um, the but there's they, two like governing bodies, and they kind of almost yeah compete against each other. Like they they kind of always battle against who's the top dog, honestly. Right, um, but anyways, she was um, told that she has to lower her testo- her testosterone in her because she has a disease called, um, hyperandrogenism, um, which means she has like five times the amount of testosterone than a typical woman would it's have. Like that, a disease, it's like just like a natural condition that occurs. Condition, right? yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, but she also her. doesn't, I, I don't think she also have like, um, she doesn't have a womb or ovaries. She doesn't have she has ovaries too. testes, right. So I think she's yep. almost, I guess the term is almost intersex. Um, yeah. So anyways, she's been a beast. I mean, she won, 
um, the 800 in the 2012 Olympics, 2016 Olympics. Um, she's been beating world records and the 800 as well. Um, and so now people are, are trying to say, well, because of how you are born, it's an unfair advantage. And that's essentially what's being targeted with this. And as a track athlete who ran competitively for a while, I just know that there are just people out there who are just Better. just freaking faster than yes. me, yeah. point blank. And it doesn't matter how many parachutes I have on my damn back, how many anchor weights I have on my <laughs> damn back, how much water I tread yeah. running in the damn sand, mm-hmm. how much how much I de- you know how much I lift or squat. I just won't be faster than those people, mm-hmm. you know. And it's and it's crazy because like you have like a an, a freak athlete like who you Usain Bolt who just what barely can put puts a 90 percent effort and still can just annihilate a majority of the competition you know what i'm saying like very few people can say that they've actually beaten usain bolt in an actual meet you know mm-hmm. and so it's just like well you have an athlete like him who's just annihilating the competition why isn't he you know why wasn't he being looked at why wouldn't people trying to come after him for a rule but then you have her who's born and she this is who she was she was not born a, ma- a male and then you know transitioned to a female she was born a female she's always been a female that's who she is but now we want to create rules to box people like her but we're supposed to just aren't we supposed to just accept people for who they are like yeah she's not she's not taking drugs she's not doing anything illegally <laughs> you know she's running fair and square and all those people who are who are racing against who aren't winning for those who are still losers i mean take your ass back to the drawing board and figure out how you can be the best and at that point then shift your your mindset to be to beating your own personal records at that point right and the crazy thing is like they keep almost and this has not come up until she came along honestly like so mm-hmm. it's, it's literally almost a bully tactic against her um, Correct. Here's the thing: we there's probably been many other people in the past that has similar conditions as her that they just didn't know about, but mm-hmm. she just happens to look just a, a little more on the outside, a little more hard. I guess I don't know what the, a good word is. Um, and so they literally have picked on her for the last decade. The hard thing for me is she doesn't even have like the world record. In the events that right. they keep on targeting her. She runs like the 800 uh-huh. and the 1500. She doesn't uh-huh. have the world records for this. So it does show that quote unquote females that you think are in your, the eye of your beholding females with less testosterone can run that fast and can be that good of an athlete. Um, mm-hmm. So I feel like they're almost boxing in what a female can do in one hand and then also picking on her on the other hand, just because it's someone that's a little different than, than that they've seen in the past. So it's just like people can still out train out uh, out train her and outrun her. She hasn't won every single time that she's been in the eight hundred fifteen hundred. Mm-hmm. Like so it's not it's, like it's a co- it's not like it's a competitive advantage exactly. is what you're saying. So it's right. Like, I get it in terms of tenths of seconds. I get it. I completely get it. However, this is literally going to change the trajectory of this sport. Because there's just going to be some men that have naturally more testosterone. So what are you going to do now? I know you're just going to set what a male could have as testosterone levels. And every man and every female have to be literally at certain points for the rest of all time. Like, well, and we've seen this, but we've seen this, this, we've seen this already though. And even other sports like Serena Williams, you know, with them constantly, I I mean, she's, she's being drug tested 10 times more than any other woman on the freaking Mm -hmm. tour. You know, and even before she had a baby, I mean, excuse me, after she had a baby, she was still beating people's tail. And it's just like, how much more? The she literally let a baby, and then eight months later came back, and then <clears throat> within her first slam. year back, within her first <laughs> year back, right? She right. she was in the finals in Wilmington and the finals in the freaking U.S. Yeah. Open, and they made it to the semi, no, the quarterfinals and the French Open, like all within a year of coming back, yeah. and then. I'm just like, what more do you need? But again, we see this time after time, especially with women of color, exactly. okay? With women yeah. of color that, oh, they're too athletic, so there must be something wrong with them. That's not normal. And it's just like, 
See, no, what the issue is, you're not used to being around black. You don't mm-hmm. know what black really is at the end of the day. Facts. Because we are that shit. We that's how good we are. Huh. Okay. So I just it's, it just frustrates me it because frustrates these me type too. of boxes should not. It should be a conversation. There should be a completely different level of acceptance. And I'm sorry if you suck, you suck. And if you out, if, <laughs> and I'm sorry, the, and, and I'm sorry if you in the community and you know you don't like what I'm saying. I'm sorry if anyone who plays sports and has done something competitive knows that you work hard and there is just some things you can't win against someone else because there's always someone better. Exactly. As you, you just you grow up learning that there's always someone better, so that's why you train yeah. personally to be the best you can be. And it's almost so you like can saying be that testosterone is the only thing that can make you good. Uh, like that testosterone levels are literally the only reason why you're winning anything, which is ridiculous. <laughs> like it is. It's mind-boggling. Well, I think it goes back to that point. You know, I'm I'm not into the sports like you guys are, but um, it just goes back to the 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 fact that we're not even talking about something that's a competitive advantage. We're talking about something that essentially is is a non-factor. Mm-hmm. And in in terms of this person's performance, it would be a different story if every. I don't know that it would be a different story, but I think the optics it would would be a di- would make it look like a different story if this person was kind of a William, or Serena Williams who was winning at everything that she was trying against or you and know don't or get me participating wrong, she's in. Definitely won like the last two gold yes. medals in the eight hundred, I think, and maybe the fifteen hundred, and she's the world champion and things like that. But, but the but- hype around it makes it seem like like she has a competitive advantage because of how she was born. Right. And that they're requ- and they're that what they're what they're saying is you should have she should have she should take medicine to alter her physiology to, yes, to make right. her quote unquote more competitive or fit within the confines of what is of defined norm- as a woman normal, normalcy you know and right it's just like how can you define what normal is that's like telling you saying okay you're six six or whatever he was. Uh, sorry, that's two inches too tall to be a sprinter. So we're gonna have to chop your ankles down, and you got to be six four or less, right? Because it's an unfair advantage that your legs are that long. Or, but why are we telling people to play down or to be less than who they are? Though you know, mm-hmm. like that's that's my biggest thing. Is like this person is who she is. She hasn't done anything to change it. She hasn't had or, or nothing. You know, and it's just like if you up there and you really are that bitch, why are you gonna tell somebody to be a peasant? <laughs> like, mm. don't I want to be like the common folks? If you a badass bitch, I don't want to be common. Right. Like, no, nah, I want I want the spotlight and I want to bask in it. And to, and to tell her that she needs to bring herself down for other people is just not cool. Literally, she has to not take cool. medicine that has side effects. All mm-hmm. just di- even different than just like lowering your testosterone levels. Mm-hmm. Medicines just have side effects. So now you're telling her to do this. Who knows what's going to happen to her physically, mentally, et cetera, et cetera, just because you don't think she's quote unquote normal? She's going to have to learn how to train. She's going to have to learn how to train all over yeah, again. What studies She'll are have to you learn. doing? Like, how do you even come to studies? Like, what study? I want to see these studies. Like, the outrageous what studies thing about present? this whole thing is that they're telling her that she has to take drugs to alter her physiology. Yeah. Like, that in and of itself is wild. Is, it's it's outrageous. It's infuriating. You know, we had this whole situation with Lance, Lance Armstrong, who took body alterate, altering medications, drugs, whatever, to enhance his performance. So now what they're saying is we want you to take medication, which you have no idea how this will affect this individual, to affect her physiology so that she can compete. I can't. It's wild. And there's this opinion piece, and I like I screen captured it, and I want to quote who wrote it, so I feel bad I don't have that right now. Um, but literally, the headline is, Caster Semenya is being forced to alter her body to make slower runners feel secure in their womanhood. The court decided that discriminating mm-hmm. against some women is required for athletic competitions to be, quote-unquote, fair to other women. I thought that was a great headline. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Just so that they feel secure in their womanhood. And I guarantee you, if we looked up who the judges were that decided this, they were not all women. All white men. They were, exactly, mm-hmm. they were probably all men. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guarantee you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's been going on for 10 years. And for her to still be as dominant and as successful as she has been for the last 10 years is incredible for her mental strength and her physical strength. Because can you imagine someone for 10 years in the public telling you day in, day out, going to courts and everything to tell you to suppress who you are? That is so insane. It reminds me of... I mean, there's so many stories out there in, in sports that that are reminiscent of this. You know, we talked about Serena Williams, but it also reminds me of things like Soraya Bonali, you know, the yeah. ice skater, the black mm -hmm. ice skater from France, who is the only person ever to perform a backflip on, on the leg. ice and do it in, in, on one leg yes. and land it successfully time and time and time again. And because she was the only person who was able to do this successfully, it was banned. Exactly. Is like and to it's make like, it fair how, for others. Wait, how do you, it's not like, right? Oh. <laughs> it's a competition. Exactly. So the more difficult the, the the you know the more difficult the the act is on the ice, on the floor, on the on the track, on the on the field, on wherever it is, it is a fucking competition. So the more difficult of an exercise that you can perform that edges you out from other people, that is what's called a quote unquote competitive advantage. And thing is like, and I don't get, and that's like telling maybe like a Simone Biles that like just because she's too athletic in her field and she's doing skills that all the other girls can't do, I'm scared that they'll do that in gymnastics or something and be like, you know what? Oh, Simone, they've already you... done that. They've, there's already been the stories about Simone Biles about her being freakishly too good and then being like, well. I mean, is there something wrong with her? Right, like, but I'm just worried she... that they're going to put rules in place to suppress her, you know, because she's literally beating up chicks left and right. So it's just like, it's just crazy to think in sports where you're telling people, especially males, to be the best that you can be, beat up on them. But then it comes to women and you're trying to make it fair. No, be the best. Beat up on them and make others catch up to you. That's like telling like Mariah Carey in her heyday, uh, don't sing that high because the other girls can't sing that high. So you got to stay in these octaves and that's it. Mm -mm. No, sing that high because that's your gift. That's what you naturally have that separates you from the competition. So I, I, I have a question and this is unrelated, but kind of in, in a sense. So I am in agreement with you guys on this, but what about when it is a trans woman competing against women? How do you guys feel about that? I mean... Yeah, do it out there, girl. No, it, it, <laughs> do that's it out a tough there. question, and it's it. a fair question. It it's is a fair, fair question, question because we're getting closer and closer and closer to this space. I mm -hmm. think, I think there's a couple of considerations. One, um, just like in the realm of boxing, you have certain classes, right? And classes are based on you know you have like heavyweights, middleweights, lightweights, etc., and everything in between. There might be an opportunity as we get into the acceptance and appreciation of people who were perhaps born in a body that is different with where who they truly are, who make the journey to transition, um, the courageous journey to transition. There might be the opportunity to redefine how classes operate within the realm of, of certain sports due to physiology. So there, that might but be I the think that's opportunity. Almost the case of what they're trying to say about the the caster case, correct? Because mm -hmm. I think that they're saying close. that, like in the future, she might be able to run against other intersex athletes, and it's just like, where do you draw that line, and how do you set these certain rules and yeah. things like that? So it's unfortunately, it's a lot of gray. Is what it is to me in this book, especially like if, especially if you are transitioning, you are taking things to actually suppress your testosterone. So if they really truly think there's this advantage with testosterone, their levels are lower, <laughs> you know? So it is what it is, at least in my eyes. Um, yes, there's, I get in sport, you're going to have to have some body of rules and things like that. So it just gets hard. If that's the case though, at least have trans individuals on the deciding teams and deciding committees of what this looks like going forward do not have all yeah. men deciding what it is all women deciding it is have a complete uh -huh. diverse picture of what these rules are going to look like i think that's where i have issues with it is all one gender or all one 
a uh, uh, white person or a black person or whatever deciding the rules. If we're going to have to have rules around what this looks like going forward, then at least have a diverse um, people that decide what this looks like and also give yourself permission of it to evolve. Mm-hmm. As you get new studies, as you get new cases, et cetera, et cetera, it's going to have to be fluid. It can't just be like we di- we decide this in 2019 and here it is in 2050 and we're still um, determining things on 2019 rules. We might learn about different things in 2050 that we don't know about now. So having that ability to be fluid is where I would see it going. I think there's I think there is there are certain sports out there that have a physiology dependency that might need to be defined for participation in those particular events, you know? So, um, you know, and, and I don't, I, I'm not going to define those cause I'm not, again, I'm not like the sports guy. So if we're talking about cooking or something, you know, we might have a different conversation, you know, but, um, but if you're, if you're talking about things like, like individual contribution sports, like diving or f- track and field or, um, you know, gymnastics, there might be an opportunity, opportunity to redefine what participation looks like based on physiology. So there might, is it possible that there could be a heavyweight division of gymnastics? Is it possible that there is a heavyweight division of diving, a heavyweight division of shock putting? You know, so I think less about the gender and more about the physiology as a deciding factor in terms of who competes against whom. Well, see, and that's why I'm still on the fence and I just say I'm on the fence just because I need to do more research on the genetic makeup as far as the advantage and, and sports and how it gives you that solely gives you an advantage and how that, you know, I feel like there's just so much about DNA that we don't understand that. Right. And that's the point I was trying to make, which is I want to do, I want to understand what the advantage of being a man in certain sports has over what women are able to do in certain sports, you know? And I think if you come at it, and I personally think if you come at it at a scientific standpoint, not a are you accepting of trans people or you're are you a homophobe or whatever, but just more so of a scientific standpoint because that's fair, you know, that has nothing to do with hate. <clears throat> It needs to be from a scientific standpoint. And the, p- people need to get the hate of their heart first and need to get their biases out of the sport first before, and just talk about, okay, what makes the sport itself? What makes it like this for men and what makes it like this for women? And if we're going to have trans w- women and men playing in different ones, we need to talk about then genetically, then how does that, if you know, if the, is the playing field the same? You know, um, and I think that's literally what it boils down to. And it has nothing to do with, again, being a trans man or a trans woman, but just is it fair? Because I get being accepting, but if you are changing the sport to make it less for other people, I don't think that's fair either. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want to, I want sports to be inclusive, but if you are just throwing away people already who are into the sport and not giving a damn about them just to make it inclusive, I don't think that's cool either. You know, there needs to be a way to make sure that both sides are being heard and represented because you got people who, especially Olympians, a lot of people don't know this, but people who train for the Olympics, either if they don't have great endorsements from like Nike or yeah. Reedy or someone else, they have these part-time jobs or like a yeah. sports dick, a sports, mm-hmm. you know, goods or something of the sort like that. And then they have like a spouse or someone else doing the rest financially mm-hmm. because it requires so much time and effort to be an Olympian. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I don't want to shit on those people who are making those hard life decisions to represent our country or their country and the sport. So I, but I mean, like everyone all, needs to be supported all around, you know, I mean, well, one, but that's what I'm saying. And ne- everyone needs to be accounted for is right. what I'm saying though. Like as much as we talk about inclusive, as much as we talk about inclusive uh, in being inclusive for trans men and women, we need to make sure that people who are currently who aren't need to be included too. 
if we're going to make space for others, make sure that the space that we have still include yeah. those already in it. Can yeah. we also agree that we're operating from the premise that we don't, we're not in a situation where we have a whole bunch of men that are like taking hormones and identifying as, as trans women to like rig the game to like win these accolades for women. Like we're not in a situation where sure. we have a lot of men, you know, trying to shirk the system. That's not the situation that we're in, at least right. not yet. At least we have identified. So we we're, we're uh-huh. dealing the situation that is causing all the commotion is we've got women who were born women operating and living their living their dreams, pursuing their goals as women and they are being chastised for their abilities in terms of who they are and how they were naturally made. And that's a pro- and that's the problem. I don't think we're going to have an answer today, honestly. No, but this it, is the something conversation that's going to take definitely time. needs to be had because it's going to happen. And I think that's Absolutely. why I'm just going with whatever does happen. At least there needs to be representation of all parties yeah. included mm-hmm. Agreed. to have their voice and to also read what these scientific quote unquote studies are saying, because yes, science is science, but you can manipulate science to tell you what you want it to tell you. <laughs> and there's a lot that's unknown. Exactly. And there's still standpoint. a lot of, and that, yeah, exactly. And that's what I was saying earlier, what we know in twenty nineteen. I mean, that's called cheating at that point. It's not science at that point. That's cheating. If you manipulating science, that's called cheating. Right. Because the facts just speak for this for themselves. Well, it's so still that, science. That's it's just different. like you manipulate it the way you want science to tell you. So I mean that's why N- no, even, no, no, I mean but, because but like, see the thing with science is supposed to be factual. Science is supposed to be factual. It's not supposed to be a manipulated tool. And that becomes morals into science, which is a whole nother debate for people right. who are into science right. so that's why i said that becomes cheating because if you do science correctly <laughs> it's factual but here's it my point factual. i was going to give you an example here's the thing that people don't even know about today <clears throat> the reason why we eat breakfast the way we eat breakfast is because of studies of science <laughs> mm-hmm. but the people that they were doing the science was kellogg's so if you look at old studies back in like the early 1900s of saying oh if you eat a, a, a healthy breakfast uh especially cereal Right. You will live long and prosper, whatever the study mm-hmm. says. But then if you look at who did the study, it's literally the same people that were selling you the cereal. And the milk company. So that's what I'm saying about science is you can manipulate right. it the way you want it to be. Yes, call right. it cheating, whatever it is. But that's why that's you need representation by all parties and multiple studies to counteract what the other studies say. So it can't just be one study. I'm so. a science nerd. I'm a science nerd. And that's why I said what I said. Cause I want to, I want to, <laughs> I want to, that to be clear. Exactly. I want that to be clear because you like, again, manipulating means cheating. Exactly. That means you, you, you're making it to, to benefit yourself. Exactly. But, but a lot of people do don't know you're being the right way. manipulated. Right. But again, if you do your homework, then you then you'll does. know <laughs> it's true. But that's why I agree with you again that it needs to be science that's done for everyone around because then the numbers do speak for themselves. Right. You know? And right. if you because, go back to the original conversation about, you know, Castor and kind of the news articles that were uh that were posted about the reason why this is recommended it was for the benefit and the comfort of other people who are basically mm-hmm. not performing up to to exactly. this person's standards which is yeah which is cheating it's exactly. it's cheating mm-hmm. at its core and you have no idea you know the, the amount of time that it takes for people to do scientific study, studies on the yeah. impacts of medicines or any kind of medical intervention medicinal excuse me medicinal intervention Within the confines of a body, yeah. it's a minimum of 10 years of research in order to get conclusive results. So there is no telling what this recommendation for taking testosterone. Forget about the the moral obligation, the scientific obligation about testing to make sure that this is not going to have adverse effects for this one individual and that mm-hmm. she would be free of concern is exactly it's outrageous that this would be quote unquote a recommendation and she shouldn't be the guinea pig she shouldn't be the guinea that, pig that no, stuff ma'am. should have been figured out they should have known okay well this is actually going to make a difference or this is going to actually make it better right now they're just like well she just needs to do this and i mean that's supposed to make it better it was like well this is all theory the right testosterone now testosterone gives her a five percent advantage and mm-hmm. when it comes to time and everything that that matters i get that part however i don't always trust studies when it 
when they're pinpointing one person. They're literally probably Correct. making right. the data points say what they wanted to say so they could get this through and kind of get rid mm-hmm. of her and go back to quote unquote status quo. Right. So that's what I kind of worry about scientific studies and not having the representation behind it. Um, because literally for the last 10 years, they've been trying to prove to get her out. And this was the only way that could, they could try to do that is to say, oh, right. science says this. Yet they probably didn't really set up the science, quote unquote, experiment to really be fair. Right. I would like to just, you know, suggest for, you know, for you guys and for the community out there, Netflix has some really great original programming and i watched a documentary called um transformative and this documentary it's about an hour and 15 maybe an hour and 30 minutes uh really it, it chronicles or follows this bodybuilder who for the last 10 to 15 years has struggled with his um with his identity and has wanted to transition and is struggling with the duality of the feminine and masculine parts of his psyche uh, because he's poured so much of his life, dedicated so much of his life into being a bodybuilder. Um, and he's navigating the waters of how do I then transition into being a woman? Mind you, he got married. He has two tri- two children, if I'm remembering correctly. And they all three are aware and accepting of who he is as a person in his transition, but he personally is struggling. So the reason I make this recommendation is because I think it's really important for people who are not of trans mindset and do not have people around them who are within part of the trans community. I think it's important for us to have some level of awareness that this is not just an easy decision for someone to just say, oh, I'm just going to snap my fingers, pay a little money, get a little snip snip and a little ad ad. And then I'm just going to be this other thing. This is a significant emotional, psychological, physiological, spiritual commitment that takes a lot of consideration. So for anyone taking this back to our original topic, for anyone or judges to speculate that the physiology of a person determines who they are and what they are capable of is a very limited point of view and it's very dangerous territory for us to get in. And I would highly recommend that that documentary Transnormative to help you understand the struggle. Yeah, I've seen that pop up. I think Corey actually watched that. Like I noticed like it was on my watch list and that it had been watched. I'm like, I haven't watched this yet. <laughs> so I think Corey had watched it. That's definitely on my watch list for sure. But yeah, it's just a it's very it's a very narrow thinking that this one thing is gonna determine the difference of the sport. There's so right. many factors, especially within track and field, of training and mental and this and that, that this one thing, yes, I get point ones of seconds. I get it. I was in it. <laughs> but there's just so much more involved. That for them to nar- narrow it down to this one thing is uh, a little iffy to me. So. And like I said to begin with, you know, track and field, especially in, when it comes to the sprinting portion. Oh, for sure. A lot of it is genetics. Yeah. A lot of it is, you know, you have a good foundation of speed. And then from that good foundation of speed, you build your strength. Yep. And you, you know, you do agility to try to increase the natural speed that mm-hmm. you have. And you can plateau <laughs> like yeah. you can, you know, like with, when it comes to sprinting, like you can, that's as fast as you can get and you can't get any faster. And that's just how it is yeah. genetically. There is nothing you can do else really. you can do about it, <laughs> right. you know, and you just need to accept that. And so if someone else is beating your ass, the fact being that you have to look at them, oh, well, there's something wrong with them. Actually, you know, right. I'm actually fast as them. They're cheating somehow. So let's, let's fuck them up. I just, as an athlete, I'm like, wow, You're how insecure, right? Exactly. Like, like how insecure are you as an athlete, as far as your capability, your ability to, to, to perform. You like, already hindered yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then think about how many people you've already beat out to even represent your country to even be on that platform. I'm like, you are ungrateful, mm-hmm. ungrateful, because <laughs> there are other people still training, trying to get the spot that you got. I'm just like, mm, and no. quite frankly, there's a lot of progressive thinking that we need to to have. And, and as it relates to the sports, because as we continue to move forward, 
technological advances in terms of what we can do with our bodies. Think about those individuals that, you know, that come back from wars and that now have, you know, robotic legs, robotic arms, robotic, you know, the integration of technology and the human form. We're at some point we're going to ha- we're going to be at a nexus where we have to start making determinations about how does one compete fairly with those and that have the same. Done that in a lot of sports. Yes, because yeah. the guy have... from from I think it was he from South Africa because he went to jail. Yeah, for murder, they killed or whatever. Um, allegedly killed his and girlfriend. I forget his name because yeah. he starts with an yeah, O. Yeah, has an O. Yeah, I, for, I forget his name. Yeah, he was kind of cute too. He Damn. was kind of cute. Yes, he uh, was crazy. I <laughs> he was <laughs> they went. They went where did they go to Aruba or somewhere? And he killed his wife down there. <laughs> no, I think it was no. at his house in like South Africa or something. Yeah, in South Africa. Yeah, he thought it was an intruder at night. That's right. Shot her in the bathroom, um, but yeah, he yeah. tried to compete in, in the Olympics. The, the Olympics, but mm-hmm. and I think he was almost he, fast enough, but they didn't allow. He him was in the they, he was in the world. He was in the world competition the year before, and they thought that his apparatus, since he was an amputee, was giving him an unfair advantage. But then you would think him being an amputee that would like at least. Make it right. fair. Balance again. it out somehow. <laughs> right. Like I never understood that. I was like, um, okay, what advantage is he getting? Because <laughs> But if you project if you project to the future of what robotics can do for the human body, for the human yeah. form, for our capabilities, and you start thinking about how progressive do we need to be thinking about what these things that technology is capable of doing for us in our physiology, it is not we're five to 10 years away from being able to enhance what our physical capabilities are because we're able to have technological um, interventions that allow our bodies to perform or outperform people that have natural bodies or holistic bodies, um, what their capabilities are. So we're going to get closer and closer to a place where whether it is technological advances or genetic advances because of just your natural physiology, there's going to be a place where we're going to have to broaden our perspectives where, um, where we have to think differently about how we evaluate how someone competes and performs and in what categories exist uh, because we're just, we're evolving as a human race. And, you know, it's situations like this that raise those questions to the forefront. I mean that's deep because that gets into changing the sport as a, as a whole. But all I say there. is I know she a lot. I know she lost her appeal her um, appeal to the whole thing. Right, that's what came down. I hope you know. I just I don't know if she's going to decide to follow through with it and continue. A part of me hopes she does and still whoops that ass and be like, and now what? And now <laughs> like say something that's, else. that would be just the ultimate like fuck you. And, and that's low key, that's what I'm rooting for. Like I think like I think I read today that there's a Grand Prix event this weekend. Like I guess the ruling takes effect next week, <laughs> which is crazy. And then Oh and perfect. Um but I guess she has one more event this weekend that she can run without whatever this ruling is. And then now she's going to have to try to appeal because the worlds are coming up here in a couple months. And then next year's an Olympic year. So there's just a whole lot going on. So, you know, we'll keep you in our thoughts and prayers, Caster. Like, it's wild, especially because you've trained your entire life for this. This is what your life is. Absolutely. And for someone to tell you what you've naturally been born with is too good (laughs) in words, Mm -hmm. honestly. Kind of sucks. So, And this is is why it's important to have... Not only this platform, and, but not only this platform, but also, you know, we might not be, you know, cisgender women with this advantage that you have out there, um, Caster, but we can empathize because we understand disenfranchisement. We understand um, being treated differently because you have physical attributes intellectual attributes, emotional attributes, whatever other attributes that make you different. And so this is why it is important for us to, un, you know, for us to promote sympathy, understanding, and for us to be champions for others who might not have their voice or might just need extra voices to support their cause and mm-hmm. allow them Absolutely. to be the best versions of themselves without being taken advantage of by people who will take every opportunity to strip people of their greatness, their greatness. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
So yeah, it's a sad situation, honestly. It like, really is. And you know, it's just crazy because I mean, just thinking about the world championships and just how women in general were just proving everybody that they can still run after having a baby eight months yeah. ago, like Allison Felix, Allison or, Felix, you know, and yeah. two other women from the U S who just had babies as well too. Yep. So, and there was old girl from Jamaica that won the hundred again after having a baby. Yeah. Um, I mean, I it's just name. ridiculous how much they're trying to, you know, police women, especially evolved around their bodies when they can do so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. So Dewan, you're going to take us home here. <laughs> what was your, uh, what was your episode that it you would was, like to relive here? Yes. It was so hard to choose because there were just so many amazing moments, but um, you know, we always got to talk about Beyonce, and when oh, of course, <laughs> and when I think about her, I think about Baychella, and there was a couple of things in that in that segment that just took me out. <laughs> it actually took all of us out. <laughs> it really did. So, speaking of things happening this week, um, do you guys? hear anything about Coachella? Did you watch any of the videos or any of the performances from this weekend? Uh-uh. It wasn't Beyonce, <laughs> so... <laughs> no. I, you know what? <laughs> I saw two things <laughs> about Coachella. Oh, Lord Jesus. I, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I saw... <laughs> It took me a moment, but I know what you saw. I, I saw I saw Fellatio in the sky. <laughs> and I saw and I saw a clip with Lizzo. That's about it. So if that's any indication of how Coachella is going it was this year as compared to last year. <laughs> sucks to be all y'all to pay all that money to go out there because ain't nobody talking about what happened. <laughs> I know that Fellatio in the sky. Felicia, yo in the sky. Yes. <laughs> I could go twice this high. No, anyway. And you know, and uh, that's all that insecure that saw, season. Yes, that is. that's exactly what I saw. <laughs> yes, that that's exactly what I thought about was insecure. I was like, you know they watch it. Yes. You know they watch insecure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they say, I'm gonna get me a moment. <laughs> I mean, they pay, uh, obviously they didn't pay attention enough to the episode because they did it at night. Okay, take Fact. notes. You're gonna take notes, take the whole note. <laughs> the whole note. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cheat on the note. <laughs> baby i was not ready that whole coachella episode if y'all are not out there watching insecure y'all gotta get hip to it and the good news is Facts. that there is what two three seasons two three seasons, seasons. Uh, three seasons three, three seasons, seasons right thank you mm-hmm. three seasons already out there and the new season season four will come out in 2020 so y'all oh. got time in between your, your game of thrones and your and whatever else y'all binge <laughs> this, at this point y'all got time to get in there and get hip to insecure but that's that episode when they went to coachella that they, might be yes. one of the that was of a all great episode. I yeah. love oh that whole gosh. episode. It's a great show. Everything I about really highly it. recommend watching it. It's on HBO. It's you will love it. I kid you not. You will love it. But yeah, the writing everything. is amazing. The like everything about it is amazing. And what I love most about it is that it's a really authentic, relatable. Um, representation of life in like your late 20s, early 30s. Just Definitely. whether you're a guy, girl, black, white, whatever, you can relate to this. And it, the storytelling is so good and so funny and so awkward. And you can just relate to it. It's it's amazing. And it's not overacted. That's what I love about it. It's not yeah. overacted at all. The situations are shit that would happen in real life. <laughs> Baby. And there's a lot of eye candy. A that, lot of skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you you see a whole, some, lot of cocoa You butter. see some fine buns in that show, too. Some fine buns. You, you see a lot of buns. I, mm, Girl. There's a lot of, there's a lot of meat that's slanging in, in that episode. And, uh, not that episode, but in that, in that show as well. So... It's a great show. But um, yeah. I saw the Ariana clip with NSYNC minus JT. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. That was kind of cute. I mean, I like Ariana. She could sing her face off. So, but, uh, so what that was, was that about? about because I heard that she brought out, I heard she brought out, like, she brought out NSYNC and, like, a couple other people I can't remember. And Nicky, then she also had, like, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. And then I guess they had a some kind of technical issue or some kind of, like, audio. It sounded like, like all of Coachella issue. had audio issues because I think I saw Lizzo on Instagram talking about her technical issues as well. Mm-hmm. So it sounded like the whole first weekend just had a lot of audio um, issues, which sucks. I mean, you put all that work into it, and then you get out there, and it's in their control to make sure it goes off. 
like it should, and mm-hmm. the audio, the main thing that you need, Girl. is not working. Mm-hmm. Whoever they whoever they hire for that, they ain't coming back next year. Coming, I can tell uh, you that much. No, you that's that. that's the bread and butter. You, you the last thing that you want to have go down is the audio when you a music festival. Exactly, especially yeah. Coachella. Coachella like prides itself as being the top music festival, festival you know? in the world. Yeah. You gonna have audio issues? Uh, uh-uh, not today, Jesus. Yeah. No, <laughs> I followed Coachella, um, and it was not as good as last year we all know why because of beyonce but even right. the lineup from everyone that i know that was there and from all like the instagram stories and messages and text messages and snaps that i received and stuff um a lot of people just were not just into it this year um like you said ariana ariana um sang her face off but she did have some technical issues um and it felt like her performance was kind of just thrown together you can tell the difference between like Beyonce's and hers because you it just felt like <laughs> she was kind of just skipping along and just bopping along and mm-hmm. there was nothing kind of new to her. Um, so that was kind of a little bit of a letdown. Vocally, she sounded okay besides that mishap. But when you got to bring out NSYNC, who you were probably two years old, three years old when they were in their prime. <laughs> You sure. brought out Diddy, who, again, you were probably not even born when, <laughs> you know, yeah, they were in their popping. prime. You know, like, and then you bring out Nikki. Yes, you collaborate with Nikki a few times, so I get bringing out Nikki. But everyone that you brought, the, the majority of the people you brought out had nothing to do with your music. You were singing covers of other people's songs. And I think that just kind of made me be like, man, you're just filling in. Like, you don't have the depth that you need to to be having this stage. Um, but you, you did your, you did your best for the opportunity that was given to you. So kudos. I to mean, you it's, we kind of talked about it last time. It's like when it comes to Beyonce, she's just so many light years ahead of everyone right now that, that you go to these other concerts or other festivals and you're just like, ah, I they see pale. the difference. Mm-hmm. I see, mm-hmm. you know? And so it's hard, especially the year after of what she did. And then she <laughs> drops her homecoming, like, the Fact. in between the weekends? Fact, yeah. I wasn't really compare. I wasn't even trying to compare her. Oh, I yeah. was just wanting to see something different from her. Different and I didn't get artists. that from yeah. her, you know? Um, to me, the, the two best performances that I saw um, was Lizzo um, and Janelle Monae. It looked like everyone really enjoyed those. Um, Childish Cambino was cool. I liked his Guava Island video. Like that was yeah, cool watching him dance to Rihanna. That <laughs> yes. was one of the cutest things ever. And then when he did the little arm up, step back yeah. with the little body roll, <laughs> I was like, "Boy, you better get on. Come on in here. I see you." There's just something a little awkward, a little nerdy about his movements that are just so endearing. Yeah, you know, it's mm-hmm. like it's not like he's like the best dancer out there. But it's like a real dancer. It's like a real moment. Like you can see yourself doing something like that. That makes it just awesome. He has joy when he dances. Like Absolutely. that's what I was oh, for like, sure. That's what I was vibing off of that video because I caught it right before I, I got on the plane today, and um, I saw just a snippet, <clears throat> a snippet of it, um, and I was just like, you can see it in his face. He's just having a great time. He talk about somebody who's living their best life right now. He he's living his and he's best just so life. talented. Like Atlanta, that show is that's another show you everyone should go out there and watch. Yes, man. Um, that show is so good. His music is so good. He's hilarious. He has like Netflix uh, stand up uh, specials that he always does. He was on was a Community. Mm-hmm. Um, community. So he was yeah. on the original Community. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's just so well rounded. Everyone always gives like uh, Justin Timberlake kudos about his like sense of humor and just how talented he is i feel like childish is up there just as high as uh, oh, yeah. jt Absolutely. you know um so shout out to him and he even talks he even talks a lot about like his upcoming and breaking into like the 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 entertainment industry and how he was so misunderstood yeah um younger because the things that he was interested in um were not the same things that you know perhaps other black kids were interested in or whatever and so you know it put them in this kind of weird box and you know i i love stories like that and i think you know that's one of the reasons why we vibe so well the three of us is because we come from you know we have a very um 
you know, non-traditional black experience background and, uh, and for many different reasons. And, um, but we all have an appreciation for our culture and, exactly. um, an expression. And it's, it's great to see the diversity that he brings to the table because yes. he shows, he shows other people that, you know, you don't have to look a certain way or you don't have to act a certain way or you don't have to like certain things or you can like other things that exactly. other people don't like and still be successful and still be considered okay in your blackness. Like there's a Absolutely. spectrum within the culture that is okay. And that's what I'm enjoying even in recent years as there's different avenues out there. And the reason why we really wanted this podcast is to show that it's okay to be okay in your blackness and whatever that is within the spectrum. You know, it's like mm-hmm. Tupac was completely Tupac. Childish is com- completely <laughs> childish. Corell is completely Corell. Dewan's completely Dewan. Jarrell's completely Dur- Jarrell. Beyonce is completely Beyonce, Riri's, you know, it, there's a spectrum and it's okay to be that, you know, and I feel like for years, society tried to pin the black community against each other and that it had to be a siloed experience. And as more avenues like the Insecures and the Atlantas and everything that's out there is showing you, ah, I have, I can relate to that now. I can relate to that and I don't have to try to be something that I'm not within this community anymore. And I love that. I do have just one other Coachella um, little piece that I just want to remind the community. um, And that's just to remember that the owner of Coachella still donates money to Republicans who vote anti-LGBTQ on certain issues as well. So although it is your coins and you can do whatever you want to because you work (laughs) hard for your money, just remember, you know, where you put your coins at and how you can be working against yourself at the same time. So just be mindful be thoughtful (laughs) and, you know, and be really thoughtful on the weekends. But, uh, (laughs) (laughs) and that is the public service announcement for today. (laughs) The more, you know, (laughs) (laughs) but no, that's a very good point. Um, sometimes you get these huge corporations or huge festivals and then you really dig and do your homework and be like, damn, do I agree with the people that are putting this stuff on? You know, and it's hard to decide and it's sometimes even just hard to get away from it. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're mindful and maybe even speak your mind against that, Mm -hmm. like if I was an artist, I'd get on stage and make sure it was like everything that they hate, (laughs) you know, it'd be (laughs) the gayest thing on earth. It'd be the blackest thing on earth. It'd be whatever it be. Um, just be like, okay, I know what y'all doing behind the scenes, but you gave me a platform and watch this. And I think watch that's what why I'm Ariana Grande do. did her whole stage in rainbow clo- colors yes. at the end with the fireworks yes. to just show that, you know, she still stands, you know, exactly. with the community. And I really appreciate that. But you're right. Definitely. Money talks. Money, money talks does. at the end of the day. And if your money is going there, you are allowing them to have a bigger voice and a bigger pr- presence against you. So just think. That's some food for thought, girl. Eat up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Okay, so but let's now really let's get into the think real about Coachella. Who did it best? <laughs> you know, we've gone right. long enough to talk about other people at Coachella. Let's get into the real Coachella, though. The Beachella. Yeah, I gotta go first. <laughs> Don't let me go first. Do not let me go first. Someone else go first because I just can't. I still can't. I've been saying that all day. <laughs> I can't. Can't even. Won't even. Shall not. Will not. Nope. Well, for all y'all who don't know, because there may be a few that that don't, they have, know um, that are if clued into the culture. If you don't know, let ooh, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> we call your well, ass you out know, on I mean, the some community of us have, some board. Of us got, you okay, know, right. Some of us got some community members that aren't as down with the culture, but you know they they support and they're willing to hey, learn. No, so listen up. Um, this is for you. So mic check, last one, mic check year, one two one two. <laughs> My mic sounds last, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so last year, Coachella. Uh, Beyonce had um, a, took basically center stage and performed what two hours mm, yes. was it two, two hours. hours of a performance that was um, life changing uh, anchored in that was <laughs> right anchored anchored in the philosophy of HBCUs and this concept of a homecoming so big bands um, uh, cheering and stepping and just the whole the whole like bcu cultural experience and um and so that happened last year and everybody lost their shit because she basically um blew 
everyone's expectations out of the water of what that performance is going to be like. A lot of us have been to her concerts multiple times and are, and she never disappoints from a performance standpoint. She is the ultimate performer. And so it was great to see her give that same energy. And it was also kind of Jarrell to your point earlier about, you know, the, the owner of, of, of Coachella and, and what they donate and spend time for, you know, she did exactly that. She gave a black experience to, um, you know, to a, a predominantly white, uh, audience, which was really, which was really great. And it really, she gave it with authenticity, but this year, um, you know, she partnered with Netflix and last night, what was it? 12 AM your time, Jarrell, mm-hmm. 3 AM, yeah. 3 AM, uh, Eastern. <laughs> Eastern time. We, we know the exact times <laughs> <laughs> it dropped. So I'm going to pause right there. Corel, what were your thoughts? Oh, well, here's the thing. So it's already been a year that we've seen it. So when it originally came out, I was one of those that stayed up in the middle of the night to watch it live and got my entire life. My edges have not grown back in this entire year. (laughs) Um, So that is a sad thing because I would like my edges back, please. But um, it's so hard to articulate almost like what it means to a rewatch it again because they took it down from YouTube so, like, over the past year, you could find, like, little bootlegs of it. But to see the documentary and the way she put it together, it was incredible. And, like, for me, yeah. it definitely gave that experience of a HBCU homecoming. My sister went to Tuskegee yeah. University, and so I went to a homecoming one year. And it was the littest thing on planet Earth. Like, people don't even care about the football game. You go to the football game to be seen, to have fun, to dance, to chant, to everything. And so for her to find a way to get that energy on stage was incredible to me. Um, if you've ever been to a black, if you ever been to a black barbecue, you take that and multiply it times a million, and that would be yes. the homecoming. It's like <laughs> that the would be best the homecoming. of the best. Everyone is there to just live their best life, and it's so incredible. Yes. So to find a way to somehow get that energy between the the fraternities and the sororities and the line dancers and the drum majorettes and the drum line and the horn section and, and the, 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 the symbols outfits, and the, the symbols <laughs> and the baton and twirler sticks. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and this is what i always say like with beyonce like it's awesome to see someone with like the skill set that she has the vision the gifts the money the discipline, the the uh, the creativity, Drive, the, the know how, the melanin, the leadership, the ambition, the 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 connections, the culture, the the wigs, the weaves, the <laughs> the fans. <laughs> like I just get so hyped. It's just cool that someone still cares that deeply. A to put on a great show. B to rehearse blood, sweat, and tears as much as she does to do so. The sacrifices that she does with her family. Um, to also put the money into it that she needs to put into it because not everyone's willing to spend their coins, the massive amount of coins that it takes to do a show like that. Um, and to be at the stature that she's at to continue to do so is so awe inspiring because it's like whatever you could dream and whatever you want to do, you can do, you can figure it out if you're willing to put in that effort, you know. Um, especially that she's giving the mighty black experience girl. She's got the whole world happy to be black again and unapologetically. And it's like, you don't have to, to worry about, Oh, am I being too black today? Oh, are they going to get it? If you don't get it, you lost. Sorry. It's your loss. Cause I'm going to be me. And it's so awesome to feel that way and to see that she still feels that way. Cause she could easily, she's, her and Jay are like billionaires, <laughs> so they could go off and be in La La Land and in the quote unquote white culture and leave us behind and they'd be fine and live a long, healthy life. But they're like, no, you know what? We have the opportunity and the responsibility to make sure that this culture is not left behind to let people know what this culture is about um, and that yeah. we are talented, talented, talented individuals. Yeah, I um I don't normally cry at things, um, but I watched it today and I probably I teared up probably eight times. I know, because it's just like the just, entire thing. And you saw the joy. The joy within it was incredible. 
Incre- and then even the moment, sorry, and I'm cutting everyone off because I'm just so passionate about this. <laughs> but like, even the moment with Solange, like, how dope is it to be up there with your sister, your blood sister, up there just cheesing, dancing away? Like that moment is the part where it made me tear up because I'm like, she didn't forget about her sister. Like she didn't have to do that, but she's like, you know what? I love my sister. We have a blast doing this. I'm gonna call her up on stage, and we're just gonna dance. How dope I'm just is gonna that? say is that no one else, no one else's fave could do that. No, no one else's favorite could do that. And for it to be a whole year later, and not a brand new performance, right. but no. the same performance, just delivered to you, and on a different streaming device (laughs) you know and it'd be the exact same thing and you get both days blended into one which by the way i called last week yeah because i said last week that she would give us a little bit of both weekends especially where her Um, boob almost almost popped out you saw that part and i love (laughs) and i love that you know she kept it authentic she kept the part where her boob almost fell out in the in the homecoming document she wasn't looking cute it was very authentic yes like when the part when her and salons fell that was in the documentary too you know like it was just beautifully done and i just love 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 seeing the blackness that just pours and shines and radiates from this documentary. And I love that one of the monologues that she posted was from Nina Simone. And it says, um, I think what you're trying to ask yourself, why am I so insistent upon giving out to them that blackness, that black power, that black pushing to them identify with black culture? I think that's what you're asking. She says, I have no choice over it in the first place. To me, we are the most beautiful creatures in the world, black people. My job is to somehow make the make them curious enough, persuade them by hook or crook to get more aware of themselves and where they come from and what they are into and what is already there is to bring it out. This is what compels me to compel them, and I would do it by whatever means necessary. And that is exactly what she did throughout that whole performance. Facts. I mean, I've been in orbit all day. There's not enough glue on this planet <laughs> that can keep my edges down. My new, my new growth has been assassinated. It is forever gone. It's just, it's been a struggle all day. I just... I just can't even. Mm. I am thankful. I am blessed. It has just been amazing. And on top of that, she she did all of this in eight months. And if you do the math, that means she only had two months post having her twins. Twins. An emergency right. C-section. Okay? 60 days after doing that. She was 218 her- pounds when she started. Don't 218 make no pounds sense. when I she mean, started. If that's not dedication... I don't know what is. And and to do something that significant and that hard, you have to love what you do so deeply. It is not just a paycheck. It is not just about the fame. You can tell this is who she is. And I'm just, it is just amazing to see. And it's really inspiring. And I hope that other young people who are inspiring to be artists or even those who are artists are now trying to figure out how can I be inspired? How, what inspires me to to go this extra mile like she did? It was just amazing. Whatever you do now, it's like do things that like makes the world better, makes it more understanding, makes them a little uncomfortable. Um, but ultimately, it's for the good of humanity and the culture. Like, don't be ashamed of your gifts. Don't be ashamed of your greatness. Push yourself. Like, that's what I learned out of it. It's just like to see her... At that level, she doesn't have to push herself no more. She can no, say, she I got enough money to sit my she black she, ass at and home. And she said she was never pushing herself that far again. She said in the documentary that she would not be doing that. But I mean, she like... She said no sugar, no carbs, no alcohol, no fish, nothing. no meat. No, like, no. I was Lord. like, girl, what you eating? What you eating, papers? <laughs> you saw they, they showed her she was eating an apple. That was it. She had one apple in, in six weeks. 
<laughs> she said, I had a uh, apple. <laughs> right. And that's it. <laughs> but besides all that performance she was doing, she was also directing at the same time for the Netflix special. She was right. making sure that the live audio and stuff was good enough for the album that she even released too. I mean, she even gave us the live album to go on top of everything. And now we have all the remixes to all the performances that she did. And I've been spending time when i tell you on choreography already today i came to this sweating y'all <laughs> i had under boob sweat when i got here i was fanning myself i mean i'm ready i'm about to lose i'm about to drop 15 pounds just because of beyonce and she gave us the second black an- anthem of the black community before i let go she done remade before i let go yeah you know that's about to be the summer bop at every barbecue and it was so good at every graduation right. at every hbcu anything this summer and spring <laughs> I am just I'm just so here for it. It was I'm everything. everything. I'm 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 still just digesting it. Um I started watching it literally three hours ago. <laughs> three, oh yeah, you watched it on the plane. Ago. Girl, I watched, I, watched, twice I watched part of it in, in the Uber <laughs> ride to the airport. I watched a bulk of it at the airport. Imagine watching just bits and pieces of it and not and restraining yourself from like bopping because you just want to get it you're so into the I'm music I'm getting to the money hey. Hey. everybody I'm getting to the money I would have been doing that whole day up in the airport girl it was so tough but then it's just like you know what I would say for people that are out there. You know, I know there's a lot. There's people that are out there that don't like Beyonce, or you know, that, that aren't into her music. I don't know how. That way, that, you know, I don't know how. Um, different strokes for different folks, I and guess. that's okay. And that's why this is a safe place. You know, people. You know, like people like Bog Skaggs too. So you know, it, it's enough love to go around. I suppose. But I, you know, the fact that I okay, so you know, obviously I watched it la- a couple of times last year, and I think last year it was, you know, again, celebration of blackness and really all about, like, it was, like, entertainment, and it was coming off of the heels of her album, and so, you know, there was a lot of, like, that going on, but, like, this time around, just, like, where we are in, you know, the United States today and the world today with all the stuff that's going de- that's going around, you know, and all of these kind of negative stereotypes that are being pushed out there to, like, become headline stories about what black culture is, you know, black-on-black crime and you know all that kind of stuff you know as i'm trying to unpack what i just saw and trying to understand like the emotions that i'm feeling like i keep going back to the fact that i was brought to tears on so many different occasions watching the watching the replay of something i had seen multiple times because there's so many layers like there you can you know for the people that are maybe seeing this or maybe in interested in seeing this for the first time, you can watch it from the pure entertainment value and you'll get your life. And I, I and I, I, I defy anyone to watch that and not appreciate the the work, the dedication, Bad. the passion, the energy, the the choreography, the the coordination, the you know, like all the work that went into putting that together and you were entertained throughout the entire thing. Um so there's that. But then it's like when you start unpacking like the messages that that You know, Beyonce and that team baked into that performance. You know, they baked in things like celebration, celebrating our culture, celebrating where we come, celebrating our, our, our creativity, you know, the, the dance moves, the, um, you know, the, the culture that we, that we brought into the black college experience that is not duplicated, can't be duplicated, can't be, you know, can't, can't be duplicated. Um, she talked about, you know, it, it was like these, she, I, I, again, I'm just like I'm, I'm getting so <laughs> I know. emotional behind it because it's like there's like it's empowerment people who who felt disenfranchised. You know, she made it a point to say that as she was directing this this documentary around that performance, she wanted everyone who ever felt like they did not belong or felt like they weren't attractive or felt like they weren't right to feel like they had a place and they belonged on that stage with all these other amazing performers and. It just it touched me in my soul because, you know, I remember being a young kid struggling with my own identity and a more than one a more than one facet of my identity, my gayness, my blackness, my ageness, my maleness, my all these things. And, you know, not having that kind of representation to be able to look up to or feeling like you belonged. And, you know, I, I so appreciate it. The the mood that she was able to create because when I sat there and watched it in the fucking airport at LaGuardia, which is gross as hell waiting for my airplane to arrive, I felt transported. 
I felt like I was literally in the, like at Coachella in line with everybody else, feeling the sweat from everybody, feeling people swaying and bobbing and moving and enjoying the concert. Like I was physically there and it was that encapsulating. And it's just, it's, it's a lot to unpack. It really is. And I like how she said in the documentary too, that there's a part when she said like, if my vision can't be heard or you can't see it in the yes. film, then it's not my vision and it's yes. not done. And we need to keep doing it yes. until, until my vision can be seen and mm. heard. Exactly. And I really appreciated that. And, you know, she didn't say it in a way that was like downing. She like no. even appreciated, you know, she was like, you know, I know yeah. y'all working hard. I know y'all doing great. And, you know, I know I can be a lot, but just bear with me and, you know, like, this is gonna this is gonna work. We're gonna get there, you we're know. But we're running there. out of time, mm-hmm. but we just gotta push on. And it was on her know? anniversary, so I mean she's given yeah. this impassioned speech on her anniversary. So it's not like she's like, Okay, I want y'all to do the work and I'm gonna go do my anniversary stuff. No, she mm-hmm. was there all day on her anniversary, the one day that you would think someone would take off. But no, she's like, No, I need to get this right because I have a vision and I know how important this is. And another thing that I've taken away from it, just Beyonce and Jay Z at right now, is like over time, we've had huge black stars that mm-hmm. have had to compromise their blackness just mm-hmm. because they know that if they didn't, they wouldn't, A, be as successful, B, they would almost be blacklisted from their field. So, like, mm-hmm. you've had the Michael Jacksons, you've had the Janets, you've had the Whitneys. Um, but now when it comes to Beyonce, she had to do that at first, but I feel like she's probably the first black superstar that could literally be literally be un, unapologetically black and stay that big of a superstar. I don't mm-hmm. think we've ever seen this ever in the history of entertainment for a black artist. And it's cool to see this live and in, in action as we're living through it right now. And it's going to be interesting that to see what comes out of this 20 years from now. Who's that next big black artist? Blue Ivy. Blue Ivy. Right, right. You saw Blue in the Ivy documentary. The she right was now. in that chair giving hair twirls. Right. She was giving a choreography <laughs> and vocals on she some track already. She said, I wouldn't do it again because it feels she said, good. It felt good, she said, mommy. She said, what, like, we not, yeah. what we not going to do is half step on this choreography. Now, let me show you how it's done. Seriously. One, two, three. Now, you do that. And if you can't do that, we will stay here all night. <laughs> she said, it's supposed to be three spins right here, mom. You're yeah. supposed to do three spins right here. I was like, oh, it's like oh, mom, you slacking today. Girl. There is three spins. Okay? It's three spins it's right here. But literally, just like if it. you think about it, like everyone else has had to sacrifice what they could say, what they could really visually do. Like even with like like a Janet with like Rhythm Nation, she was trying to give you a little of like the black experience, but it had to be a little more sugar coated. Beyonce is like, I'm giving you HBCU because it's important to our culture. It's an important. It's important for you to know what it is, and I am shoving it down your throat. And it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be talented. You're gonna enjoy it, and I'm gonna drop the live album on your ass. How about mm-hmm. that? <laughs> you know. And <laughs> I, I, we've I'm here never seen this to this level in the history of entertainment, of black entertainment, and just pop culture as a whole. Mm-hmm, this is just a great model for how to use your platform. For sure, you know, we are all we are all blessed with with powerful minds, with intense creativity, with unique perspectives, tons of talents that are unique to us. And the question is, how are we using it? And how are you how are you using the platform that you do have to? Create a space where others have the capability to either follow in your footsteps or to leverage your path and take it even further. And what she's been doing these last 10 years in her trajectory of her career, particularly with these last couple of albums and performances, is using her platform to showcase the beautifulness, the 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 wonder the creativity the specialness of the blackness and how it can be integ- how it is integrated into her being that you know she always talks about that she's a she's a country girl from Texas and she, and no matter how rich she gets she's not going to forget that and being humble to know where you come from but also to use that as a platform to to allow other people to to be the best versions of themselves and not have to feel like they have to compromise um, in order to get ahead, that's that's a beautiful thing. So it'll be to your point, Carol. It'll be interesting to see like the after effects exactly. of this twenty years from now. But I guarantee you, this is a 
this is one of those like history making moments. Oh, for sure. Definitely. So, I mean, I only watched it once today. I'm about to watch it again, probably after this podcast. Probably going to watch right. it again in the morning. <laughs> you know what? Kudos to Netflix because the servers did not uh, break down. Because I know there was hundreds, I hundreds been of millions of people that were probably watching this. Girl. Look, <laughs> so good and they job, Netflix. Netflix. Look, all I know is Beyonce, thank you for this live album. But I still need still need me a new album. Yeah, it's like where's, where's, where's the where's new album at? <laughs> this is not going to hold me over for three this more years. Bitch. Okay, yeah. you just this remake bitch. then. Okay, I need exactly. some new stuff, some new ish. So I give you the 2020, ma'am. Yes. Okay, mother, queen, B. Listen, <laughs> thank you. 2020 though. And I'm going to put it out here so it's on record. I feel like her next album is going to be very African inspired. I feel like she's going to do. Agree. That mm-hmm. grown woman vibe, like yes, how that that's was kind exactly of that, what I said too. Uh, African, I think that's where yeah. she's gonna go. I think she's I'm just here for it. I would love go that. All the way black. She's like, I'm taking it to the motherland. She's giving you all levels of black. She's giving. Exactly. She's gonna give you give us all levels of black, and I I really yes. hope she does. Because so um, it's about time. It's about time. Especially with the Lion King coming out, she's gonna be like, Oh my god, I'm in the way. Wait, bitch, how that go? How does that go? <laughs> <laughs> That's the remix. <laughs> Not a remix of the Lion King. I'm a grown woman. Yes, that that's one of my favorite Beyonce I'm a songs. Grown wa- like that was literally just a taste, it and was it had a like those. It was all African drums and and all that kind of like Africanness, and she was feeling her motherly oats at that point. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how she takes that further. Shout out to Timberland. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, but yeah, we could talk <laughs> about. Yeah. I mean, we, get, we have a Beyonce a segment jungle. every episode. <laughs> no, 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 get it. It, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> But yes, uh, completely <laughs> but yeah, got our so lives thanks, today. Thanks, homecoming. I'm I'm good. I, I, I loved it. I'll be I watching only that in my house for the next until Friday. Y'all pray for Fiznick because <laughs> I already told him there will be nothing else on on not a narrative TV in this house. I know Corey was so, already oh like, no, Lord. I don't feel like watching it again. Oh. I'm like, wait, why not? What are you talking about? We're about to watch this again. <laughs> I mean, yeah, see. Yeah, and Adam's not not feeling it. I, I could probably get him to sit through like a couple of songs. I mean, he he don't get me wrong. He enjoy her concerts, like being in in concert, but he's not like a huge super fan. So I think it's a different experience for black people and probably just like you like minorities <laughs> versus our Caucasian family. I, I, they probably don't get the deep rootedness of it. Us. Exactly. It's, we, it's, exactly. You're absolutely you right. Seen. She sees exactly. us, and I, and if you if you've ever felt not seen, yeah. If you've ever not felt seen, she's someone who sees you. Yeah. She sees you know maybe not even in the specifically, crowd. but even in the crowd because there was a part where she was like, "I see you, girl. How'd you do that so fast, y'all? She got my outfit on." And you know, it was a <laughs> trans uh, woman. That she was it out. really? Yeah, I saw an article that uh, released oh, today. Wow. It's a trans woman, and she had the yellow uh, sweatshirt and the denim uh, shorts on. Yeah, from the week Baby, before. I love our culture. Exactly, yeah. honey. I am so here. We show for respect it. in such a big way. Yes, <laughs> I love our culture. I love our people. I love our culture. Uh, yes, uh, I love Beyonce. She just she sees us, and it's just you know, it's like she's opening so many doors. Yes, for sure. I know. There's nothing else. This to say about it. I mean, <laughs> and if you haven't seen it, I don't know don't where you've been. It. Like, why you wh- stop listening to this? E- well, maybe don't stop listening to this episode. After this episode, after you listen to it, go to Netflix and <laughs> and watch it and watch it. Everything. Absolutely, absolutely. Ah, yeah. uh, you know what? Beyonce always doing it for the culture, man. For the culture. Man, I still watch Homecoming like at least. Every other week, I still watch you, that I documentary in a little bit. I need to watch it. I'm still learning the choreography. In my entire life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And guess what, Jerome? We predicted that she was going to come out with an African inspired CD, sure did. and literally, like called a month it. later, she did. <laughs> we called it. it. <laughs> we knew. So we, we knew. predicted all kinds. So you of know stuff what and, that means? You know what that means? We also that? predicted a Beyonce Solange album. So we sure did. That's and coming. We next also said we needed something in 2020. So 2020 is two days away. Yeah. So come on, B. The year of 2020 <laughs> is all yours. You and Solange <laughs> surprise <it>. us. <laughs> or even if you want to do something with Kelly and Michelle again, I don't care. But we need an album. Hurry Facts. up. 
So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed these like little clips that we put together for you guys. Best of segments. Thank you for supporting us throughout 2019. This was a dream of ours to, to put a podcast together and just to see the support from the community has been incredible. Um, so we got a lot of things up our sleeve for 2020. We hope you guys have a great new year. Hopefully yes. you're listening to this a couple of days before the new year. But even if you're listening to after the new year, happy new year. We love you guys. And uh, like I guess I always say, I think that's it for this episode. We'll see you <laughs> next yeah. week. Bye, y'all. See y'all right, next bye, year. Y'all. <laughs>